Okay, welcome to another episode on the Boostly podcast. This is the podcast that gives hosts the tools, the tactics, the training, and most importantly, the confidence that you can go out there and get some more direct bookings. My name is Liam Carolan, and I'm the co-host on the Boostly podcast with Mark Simpson. Uh, so today we're going behind the host. This is where we look at successful and interesting short-term rental hosts from around the business. Today, we've found one in the UK who I'm looking forward to, to going through these questions. It's somebody I've known for a long time and uh, I consider a friend and also I've learned a lot from him. So I'm sure he's going to share some tips and some really uh, interesting and uh, inspiring sort of stories really because um to do what he's done certainly at his age he makes me feel very old um is absolutely amazing so today we are going behind the host with josh guest from guest homes welcome along josh thanks liam uh thanks for having me on uh looking forward to it well welcome so much uh, and, and it's awesome to have you here you know it's just uh, this is going to be fun so uh, let's start off by you giving yourself uh an introduction who is josh uh, who is Josh Guest and um, what do you enjoy most about hosting? Yeah, so uh, my name is Josh Guest, um, 24 years old. Um, we manage and own slash rent to rent. Um, we've got a portfolio of 80 properties across the UK. Um, and the main thing that I like about hosting really is um, giving a good experience to customers and also to clients, um, I kind of see those two as the main aspects to the business um, because seventy percent of our portfolio now is managed. So um, the clients are really important, and also the customer experience is really important. Um, and we've been more heavily focusing on that um, probably in the last twelve months um, to make sure because. I think that's quite a big one that a lot of people sort of skip over the actual customer journey and the customer experience, um, making sure that it's top level and it's and it's for it's making sure it's top level for the customer, not not where you think the customer should be. It's actually making sure the customer is actually rating it sort of ten out of ten experience. Doesn't mean you're going to get a ten out of ten review but um that's what you're always aiming for but you want to give them a 10 out of 10 experience can you tell us a bit more about the the business so where in the world you host um if there is one specific place and you mentioned the number of models um and what kind of guest avatar you tend to host as well yeah sure so um so we've got three different parts of the business so we own a few properties um we've just been buying this year um, and then we manage about 55 properties um, and then we have uh, just over 20 rent to rent properties or rent to SA properties. Um, the areas that we work in um, predominantly now is around Worcestershire slash the Cotswolds, Hereford, um, Cheltenham, that sort of area. Um, and then we do also have properties in Norfolk and in Brighton. Um, we've got one in London as well, and then some in Swansea. You've also got the rent to rent or rental arbitrage, which is 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 how some people listening will know it. And then you've got some your own, which of course you're fully in control of. Is it purposeful that you've done that kind of split across the portfolio? And is there, what would you say the advantages are and the, um, I guess, the drawbacks of each of those kind of strategies? Yeah, 100%. Um, so originally, because I didn't have enough cash to buy property, um, I originally started the rent to rent um, or rent to SA. And, and then once I built up a decent cash flow of on that, I actually kind of seen it as I needed to be as that was that's always the highest cash flowing method. Um and I always thought of it as well I need I want to be able to support the business um with the rent to SAs as in support my own salary um as them the business that are growing even the teams that are growing I wanted to be able to support the like the premises and the team with the rent to SAs and then and then I started adding on management. People started to ask me to manage their properties. And I thought, oh, this is a great additional income as well. So then we started to scale up the management side of things. Um, and then that was also, um, I kind of classed that as like a, as a bonus at the time. So then we, we were split. So um, 
because I didn't want it to be all risk heavy into one strategy. Um, so if anything goes wrong, say like even like say like when COVID happened, if you were, we were still making some profits off our rent to SAEs because we just diversified the strategy a little bit. Um, well, quite a bit, to be honest. Obviously, it didn't have to be completely different kind of clients I was put, putting in there. Um, but if it was management, we'd have probably lost a lot of our revenue because the turnover would have been a lot lower. Um, so then we'd have made a lot lower profit. Um, so I think it's good having a diversity risk. Um, now we are mainly scaling up the management side uh, because I kind of feel that's the quicker option to scale uh, because we want to try and get to a thousand units um, by six years time. Um, so that's kind of the plan at the moment. And I feel like that's the quickest option to scale. Um, and also I feel like we can also op- we can offer a really good service to our clients as well, uh, make them more money, um, and it's a win-win for everyone. And then the the purchase options it obviously is just a complete separate avenue, which basically some of the profit that we're making from the business, I want to keep buying more and more property um, and class that as complete long-term investments. Obviously, it's brilliant what we're making on the profit-wise on it, um, but just keep that into a complete separate part and just keep reinvesting that. And then I can use that whenever I want to use that, either if I ever exit the business or if anything uh, extreme happens, then there's always that side income there as well. I think it's one of the things which is interesting, um, certainly for me, who's who's also growing a uh, short term rental business, is that um, when I first came into short term rental, I didn't really understand why people do certain strategies, but the the rent to rent is by far the quickest way to get some cash flowing and to learn the systems or, or rental arbitrage. It just is, isn't it? And even now, some of the rent to rents are way more profitable than, uh, you know, sort of the management side of things. But the benefit of that management, like you say, is it just diversifies risk. You, you, you basically got the opportunity to earn off somebody's asset and to help them make more money. But with none of the downside, you're not having to buy the property, you're not having to buy the furniture, you're not having, to, you know, all that cool stuff, which is um, just giving you such a benefit. And then, of course, like you say, it just makes sense. Then you've even de-risked further by then owning a property. You're in full control. You've actually got an asset. And um, it just seems like such a nice journey. And I'm, 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 I I'm know people who listen to this will go, hey, that makes sense. That is something which is a good business model to to do, which is to start off with one of those models and, and work your way up. And for me, the thing that really helped was having rent to rents. You learn the systems before jumping straight in on co-hosting or management because you don't know what you don't know until you start hosting, which is cool. So I think, yeah, 100%, you, you got to make um, that. That was kind of another thing, actually, kind of make mistakes and learn everything yourself first. So um, I felt like I couldn't manage a property. Um, this would be the same for like, I don't know when people like educate people or whatever. So um, if, if, if you haven't done it yourself first, how can you offer that to somebody else? So I felt like I had to do rent to rent first because I needed to learn those areas, make sure it works, give a proven model. And then I've got statistics, figures, facts, everything. And then I can be like, bang, here's this to a management client. Um, this is what I think we can earn. Um, obviously the market can change with any circumstances, but this is what exactly what we've done. This is exactly what our property looks like. Uh, and it gives a good example then to, uh, to them. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. So, um, yeah, that brings us to the end of this behind the host, um, sort of podcast. Um, is there anything I missed any questions or final thoughts before we bring things to a close, Josh? No, that's uh, brilliant. Uh, thank you for having me on. Thank you for joining us. And again, thank you to you as our listener for Boostly. Uh, we know there's lots of places you can put your attention and we really thank you for spending it with us here at Boostly. So that's it from Josh and that's it for me. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks very much. Bye for now. Having a blast. Gonna get it on the Boostly podcast. Boostly like Bruce Lee because it's so hard and the tea is loose leaf. Making up those rhymes. Don't write it just to it loose.